Good morning, YouTube. Or, well, it's actually 9.53 a.m. UK time on the 6th of July, 2013. And, uh... Today... Completely unscheduled. Um, I am going to be doing a full tutorial flight in the PMDG 737-800-NGX. Um... This uh, is is the second most, and I repeat, second most uh, requested video slash tutorial from my live stream. Um, first being the FSN tutorial, which I uploaded the other week. So uh, yeah, if you're if you're unfamiliar with the live stream, head over to twitch.tv forward slash balance. I'll put that in the description of the video. And uh, you can watch Flight Simulator Live, more specifically my Flight Simulator Live. Um, and yeah, it, it's good fun. Anyway, on to the task in hand. Um, doing a full tutorial flight takes a lot of time. And to the people that have already done, their out, uh, done this on YouTube already out there... Wait, that doesn't make any sense. For the people out there that have already done this on YouTube, kudos to you. Because... This is about the 8th take now, and I'm getting really bored of trying, so I don't care if this goes wrong, I'm just going to go for it. Um, it it's, a long, it's a long process, and especially if you're doing a long flight. So I've decided that I'm just going to pick the shortest Ryanair route that I could possibly find, which was Manchester to Dublin. So EGCC is the IKO for Manchester Echo Golf Charlie Charlie and Dublin EIDW Echo Golf no Echo India Delta Whiskey. There we go. Said it. All good. Right, so um courtesy of my friends at Ryanair, I have acquired a real world flight plan, which means that I have all the correct weights and the fuel. I will save that for another day on how you can acquire such things and how you can plan for such eventualities and be realistic, etc. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to go through that because it takes a long time and this is already going to be long enough. So, anyway, to the flight deck. I have loaded in uh, the long turnaround panel state. If you go to PMDG setup, and then you go do panel state load, and then just load the the long NGX long thing, whatever you want to call it, um, and let it initialize. It'll come up in the green bar saying initialize panel state, etc., etc. Um, I just realised that that's an American systems, so we'll move it across the UK or oh, European. Uh, yeah, so that should leave you in this state. Um, the first thing we actually need to do is get round to navigation. At the moment, everything is pretty much in, a, in an off state or in an, a misaligned, a de-aligned, not quite sure what the word is, state. So we need to fix that. So if we go to the overhead panel, which is here, look up to the top. These IRSs here, two of them, put them both to nav. And then we can head back down to the FMC and we can press FMC. Position initialization page. Type in Manchester, which is there. And we're at gate 54. Uh, okay, note here, you may have seen other people in other videos uh, grab the location from either the reference airport or the gate at the reference airport. I've been told otherwise. I've been told that you get the actual uh, location from by pre or you get it by pressing next page. And then selecting it from either GPS's, that gives you the most accurate one. Um, there is not a great deal of difference between the gate and what it gives you. But I guess, you know, GPS's are good. I don't really have much more of an explanation. So, that's that. Press root. Put that in the top. Put your destination in the top right. Put your call sign in the middle right what are we? right now one Charlie Alpha we're going off runway 23 right uh... okay you can either do it two ways but my way is going to be my way choose whichever way you feel you can either press next page and start filling out the route first or you can go to the departure and arrival page 
and you can select your departure. Two, three, right. We're going via Wallacey, which is Whiskey Alpha Lima, one Romeo. Uh, then press next page, and then you can go and fill out the rest of the route, which is Lima 10 to Penil. Please do not uh, pronunciate that wrong. We've had some rather nice disasters on Batsim before. Uh, Lima 70 to uh, to Bagso, and that's the end of the route. Extremely short flight, less than 160 miles, take us 40 minutes maximum to get there. Activate that, head over to the performance initialization page, double click your zero fuel weight, leave the plan forward slash fuel as it is. Reserves, it's 2.2 .2 on this flight plan, but just make sure anything you, uh, make sure as a minimum you leave 2 tons, which is 2.0. Um, I don't care about being pedantic. It, you know, just make sure you've got enough fuel to get there, and if you have to do a go around or whatever, or hold, you've got fuel to, to cater for that. Cost index, I can't remember if I use this 8 or 6, I'm going to go for 8. Um, and our cruise level is flight level 200, which is from the flight plan. The cruise winds are 239 at 66, courtesy of Active Sky. Uh, and the outside air temperature up there is minus 25. Uh, la 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 la. Transition altitude, 5,000 feet per the charts. I'll link everything below so you know what I'm talking about. N1 limit, N, uh, 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 try again. N1 limit, courtesy of top cap with this weight, 22 kD rate, with 39 as the uh, assumed outside air temperature. Gives us an M1 of 90.2. Takeoff, flap 5, with a center of gravity of 24.3. Uh, which is automatically being calculated, gives us these speeds. I'm happy with that. Okay, what I am going to demonstrate today is something called an NA, uh, NADP. So, N, N, A, N, A, D. Yeah, one. Um, it's a type of departure for noise abatement. It basically stops the old folks in the residential areas that reside around the airport boundary complaining to the airport authorities that they're being woken up in their afternoon nap um, by a Ryanair 737 departing off the runway that's next to the house. Why they want to live right next to an airport in the first place is beyond me but hey. So uh, it's an NADP1 basically means we are climbing at V2 which is this speed 140 knots plus 10 so that'd be 150 knots um, and we'll climb at that until 1500 feet and then from there uh, we will go into climb power which is here you can see reduction to 50, 1500 feet AGL we'll go into climb power and we will maintain V2 plus 10 um, until 3000 feet AGL and then we can start to accelerate and clean up the aircraft okay so it is all to do with noise. Um, the the NAPT or NADP2 um, is slightly different. It's for when you don't really have people that care about noise. Uh, every airport has their own procedures. I can't even remember whether you use a 1 or a 2 at Manchester, but just for the sake of demonstrating, I'm using a 1. So reduction 1500, that's perfectly fine. Climb thrust 1. Um, which is the first detent of climb power. Sorted. Now that may not make sense at all to any of you, but it doesn't really make sense to me either. I just go with it. So 140 is the V2 speed. And that's also going to be the speed we set in the MCP and the um, speed bug, which is, uh, is just here. 140, there we go. We can set runway heading, which is 234. And we can set the initial altitude, which is 5,000 feet. Um, we can turn both flight directors on. We can also go back to the progress page. We see we've got plenty of fuel to land with. Uh, we can also set up the other FMC just to chill out on the progress page for the moment. We can turn the bottom displays on because we'll need them shortly. Uh, we can RML nav. We can set up the radios for the departure, which is a YC1 Romeo. Uh, we'll turn, we need both VORs on because we're going to be using two of them. So on the left hand side we need Manchester which is 113.55. Uh, there, which should I dent here on the bottom left? Yeah, it's done it. 
And on the right we need Wallacey, which is 1 for 1 for decimal 1. Uh, there we go. That may ident, I don't know. Maybe we're a bit too far away from it. Yeah, we might be a bit too far. Never mind, it'll ident when we're in the air. Okay, so the departure goes as follows. Climb straight ahead till Manchester, so Mike Charlie Tango. DME 3. Then we need to turn right heading 275. Which if we zoom in a little bit, you can see at 3 DME... Actually, let me get, make this bigger. At 3 DME here, we're turning right up that way, which is about 275. Uh, and then on that heading, we're to intercept the outbound radial of 255 from, Man uh, from the Manchester VOR. So we'll set the course on this side to 255. I could have scrolled it the other way, but I didn't. Um, and then from that, at 19 DME from Manchester, we need to turn right to intercept a 129 inbound radial to Wallasey. So we'll set 129 on this side, um, which then when we can eye down Wallasey when we're in the air, you'll see that all makes sense. Um, we won't be flying this manually, by the way. This is just to back us up just in case the lateral navigation, i.e. LNAV, fails. Uh, we can set the order brake to RTO. Uh, we can also get set the Q&H by pressing B, although I wouldn't recommend it. I'm just incredibly lazy. It is 1029. Um, so, that's that. I hope I'm not moving too fast. Maybe I am, but this video is already going to be stupidly long. So, we can turn the fuel pumps on. We can boot the APU up. We can turn the probe heats on and the window heats on. Right at the top there. We can also leave the packs off, turn the recirc fans on. Uh, we can set our cruise altitude of flight level... or cruise level, flight level 200. We can turn the ISO valve to auto. Hydraulic pumps can come on. We can arm these lights. We can turn the seatbelt signs on and everything else. The logo light can come on, even though it's daytime, but whatever. Your damper can also come on. Uh, we are just waiting for the APU to come online. Cool. Right, we can transfer the power to the generators, the APU generators. Uh, we can now set the parking brake because we're ready to come off ground power. Might as well set the trim while we're here. Five units or thereabouts. Come on. Right, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, just check that, that's fine. Right. Uh, what now? Brain freeze, brain freeze, brain freeze, brain freeze. Ah, oh, that was it, yeah. Ground power, that can come off. So, uh, menu, FS actions, ground, get rid of everything. Cool. Parking brake set. Right, we can get GSX to push us back. Nose right, we want to go because we're heading down that way. Uh, we can have the anti coal light on now. We can also... Uh, wait, have I already done that? Yes, I have. So that's fine. Oops, go back to there. What we need to do is shut the doors. I'm panning around like a headless chicken because I can't find the right button. Uh, FS actions, doors, get rid of the air stairs. Close the front, close the back, close the cargo. Uh, closing, closing, closing. Go back to the walk outside. You should be able to see that that's what's happening. Yeah, everything's going away. There we go. Doors are shut. He's pumping his handbrake like a pro. Right, all is good. Release the parking brake. And back we go. Okay, starting sequence. Number two always. Just flip it to ground, which is GRD. You should see a positive increase in N2, followed by N1. Wait until N1 is at 2.5, and then throw the fuel in. 1.7, 1.8, 9, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, come on, 5 fuel in. Uh, 
Lovely whine of the engines as they power into action. What we're waiting for now is for this starter switch to cut back to the off position. And then uh, we can start the other one. There we go. Starting number one, same sequence. Wait for 2.5, chuck the fuel in. Fuel's in on number one. We should probably stay like this just in case the engine blows up or something. I can turn the fuel off quickly. But the chances of that happening are pretty slim. Just wait for that to, uh, to sort itself out and click off. There we go. We can hide this display now. I'm done with it. <coughs> Excuse me. Throat is dying on oneself. Okay, so we can switch the generators on now. We're done with the APU. Can also put the packs back on. Get rid of the APU bleed. It's not needed. Turn the AC source to Gen 1 and the DC source to TR1. Everything is good, 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 good. We can get rid of the APU, we can put the starter switches to continuous, we can set the parking brake as GSX is done, we can turn the taxi lights on. We can now also set flap to 5, 2 and 5. For those of you that love wing views, here's your moment of glory, you will not see that again. Or maybe you will, but not often. There you go, flaps down, hope you enjoyed that little view. Right, control check, full left, full right, back, forward, it works, hazard, we're good. Okay, wait for GSX to do one. That's it, you just walk away, it's not like we've got a plane to fly. Alright mate, calm down. Run me over. Yeah, stop waving at me and move! This is what I don't understand about this piece of software. I'm done, go! Look, he's like a meter under the ground as well. Right, let's go. So we're taxiing down to Juliet 1, which is literally right here, left here, all the way to the end where the pub is, where all the alcoholics go. Ryanair taxi standard is basically you start with Toga on the taxiway and then to slow down you uh, just put it into idle reverse. I'm lying, that's not actually what you do. Don't take that at face value. It just feels like that when you're on the plane. Power around the corners like you're doing some sort of Formula 1 manoeuvre. By the way, if you're watching this and you're one of those anal people that like to use Flight Simulator like you're a real pilot, you probably shouldn't be watching this. Just uh, just for your information. There's going to be a lot of haters on this video. That dislike button will be spammed. But zero fucks are given. This little loop thing doesn't even exist anymore, but the scenery apparently still has it, so in tradition we shall follow the lines. Right, well we're approaching the, the runway now, so um, I guess we can kind of just roll on and go. It's not as if there's anything in the way. the alcoholics in the pub. 
Oh, they just vanished. Never mind. Oh, no, they're back again. Let's see if we can see them. Hello, alcoholics. Right. This is us pretty much nearly lined up. Come on, round the corner. Please don't screw the line up. It's not difficult to line a plane up. And I screwed it up. I'm a genius. Nice. Okay, well, I don't really care. I'm only a little bit to the right. Fixed landing lights on. Strobes to strobe position. Turn the transponder on. Turn the order throttle on. Start the clock. Life is good. 40%. Remember, this is the NADP1, so we are going to climb at V2 plus 10. Um, when we get in the air. Toga. See, absolutely miles of runway to go, just accelerating through 80 knots. Those of you that can't read. One hundred and twenty knots. V one. Rotate. V two. There's V two. And we're airborne. Pitching to the flight director, which is about fifteen degrees. Gear up. Right, we want to maintain one fifty knots. So we'll do that by flicking that to uh, well actually we'll leave it at one sixty because I'm not slowing down. That'll be a bit stupid. So we can maintain this speed now. We're looking for 1,500 feet, and when we get to 1,500 feet, good old automatics of the NG will kick in, and we should clutch down to climb power. There we go, climb power. Right, we can climb on this. I'm going to put the autopilot in. I'm going to put VNAV and then speed into v VNAV. Oh, 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 oh. At 160 knots. And then we get to 3,000 feet which is in about 500 feet time. See, we're making the right turn now to 275. We can follow that through the heading bug. 3,000 feet, we can now start to speed up. Put flaps to one. In fact, we might be able to just get all the way to zero here without stopping. Yeah, flaps up. 250 on the speed at the moment. Um, okay, we can now reset MCP out to flight level 200. Just spam intervene so it clears all these altitudes out the way. And then we can, because we've got no traffic in the way, let's delete that and we'll go all the way. There we go. Or to break off, gear off, take the landing lights out early because it's daytime. Put that back to zero, turn the logo lights off. I meant back to off, not back to zero. What am I talking about? Right, and this is the two seven oh yeah, transition altitude, standard pressure. This is now the 255 radial in outbound of Manchester, and we're going to fly that to 19 miles. Um, at the moment, we're at 7 point, well, and nearly 8. And this is the real boring part of the flight because all we're going to be doing now is climbing up to flight level 200, following LNAV, following VNAV, everything is set as it needs to be set. The only thing you can do is turn the seatbelt signs off when you get to a, a reasonable altitude. Um, so I am going to skip until we are somewhat further down the line and we're going to do some descent planning and then land the actual plane. 
So, yeah, you're going to trip out now because the next time you'll see this will be at flight level 200 somewhere over the sea. Enjoy! Okay, we are back in the flight deck. Uh, over the sea, as I promised. Um, it might seem a bit weird that I just introduced it again, but you get the point. Okay, so we're actually overhead, uh, just approaching a waypoint called Gigto, which is on the Lima 70 airway down towards uh, Bagso. Uh, we're at flight level 200 in the cruise, nothing's changed, we're still on VNAV, we're still on LNAV. I haven't touched anything in the FMC, we're still the same as we were when uh, we last left you. So, descent planning. I know because of the winds we're landing on runway 28, so ILS 28, and it's a Bagso 1 Lima uh, arrival with a LAPMO transition. Uh, LAPMO is just a, an intersection or a waypoint, should I say, that's actually on the ILS of runway 28, so it gives us uh, for, for better positioning for, for that. Uh, sometimes transitions aren't necessary, but why the hell not? We might as well use it. Okay, so if we look at our legs page, um, we can go on plan mode just to check that it all matches up. So to Bagso, and then from Bagso it's a left turn uh, down to that. It's flying some sort of arc weird thing, um, and then back up towards Latmo. So we'll we'll fix this because it's a bit broken. Um, and what we'll do is we'll grab Bagso because there isn't any ATC on, and we'll replace everything below Bagso up to Latmo with Latmo and then what we should get is from Bagso a direct uh, yeah from Bagso a direct so it's saying reset MCP altitude which means that we are approaching top of descent which is right there Wallacey 45 so we're, we'll just look in the FMC and it says that we need to be flight level 100 by Bagso which corresponds with the charts so we will reset MCP out for what flight level 100 for the moment and any further descent planning we will do uh, once we're in the descent. Uh, so we need to go to the descent page and we need to go to forecast. And we need to check what the transition altitude is. Uh, well it should be on this chart somewhere but I can't see it. Looking, looking, looking. Where are you? I can't find the this transition altitude. Oh, it's right there. Transition altitude 5,000 feet, so it's flight level 55. Be quiet. Um, we can put some descent winds if we really need to, uh, but it's just it's just, yeah, such a short leg. There's really no point, and we're not coming from any substantial height. So, it wants us to be two uh, 250 knots flight level 100 by. Um, uh, bag so I think B means by or at or below maybe I don't know I'll have to check that one but anyway I'm profiling down to 100 I know that much uh, um, from there we're taking a left turn direct to Lapmo so we can have a look at the the radios that it gives us press init ref and it says that the ILS is 111.35 and the course is 279, so I'm going to set up for a, a Cat 3 ILS, which means that I'll be using both autopilots and taking it manually, just because I'm lazy. Um, 111.35. We can put that on both sides, so if you've never used an ILS before and you're watching this, you put the frequencies in both sides, and then when you establish, you engage both autopilots. That's how it works. Uh, we're going to use flap 30, we're going to use order brake 2, which is a speed of 140, so we'll be landing with a uh, speed of 145, because the wind's not even that strong. Uh, yeah, so that is the descent bit done, for now. We can go back to map mode and see where we are. So I'm going to skip until we're over her back, so, because Descending is just going to take forever. Right, so we're just approaching Bagso now, just through flight level 110, uh, descending to one flight level 100. Uh, what we're actually going to do now is just 
to, to get us in, into a shortcut, we're going to go direct to Lapmo. Now that is going to screw up our descent profile because we turned early. And it wants us to be 2,500 feet by Lapmo. Now, uh, th there's a couple of ways that we can we can kill this. Um, we can either speed intervene it, which would mean manually taking the speed and increasing it so a flight like a typical flight level change so it would descend faster to try and meet a faster speed or because I don't want to hit the IRS doing 300 knots I'm gonna just turn left now manual headings and then I'm gonna level change it uh, at a moderate speed uh, that isn't 300 knots and then if we just look for the the vertical bar which is a green arc uh, we can kind of plan the descent based on that we still not identified the IRS yet, so we're still a bit uh, far out. But when we hit Latmo, Latmo is exactly 12 miles from the I level, 12.9. So it means that we've got 21 to run for there, plus another 12, so what's that, 34? 34 miles to go, passing flight level 95. Um, the early turn was definitely required. So as you can see now, this is descending to 2,500 feet, and the bar is pretty much on where Latmo would be. If I turned right now, the bar would be probably over here somewhere. And considering we have to be something like 1,530 by that point there, we'd be far too high. So don't stress yourself out trying to get down in time. If you're on VATSIM and you've got ATC and they're screaming at you to descend and you just cannot physically do it, then you tell them you can't physically do it. You know, we we're not, we can't work with miracles. We can just fly the plane. Uh, the w there is lots of advanced techniques on how to to, to maintain uh, a good rate of descent and a, a good speed and all that. You know, I may go into that at a later date. This is just the basics of of getting yourself from A to B. Okay, so don't expect anything to to come from this as far as you know. Oh my God, you're such a pro because it's not really the way. Uh, they would probably do it in real life. Some of it is, not all of it. So see there, we, we, this this is good. This is good. We're on we're on to a, a winner at the moment. We may not even need to use any spoilers or speed brakes or whatever this thing is called. Yes, yeah, speed brake. Spoiler when it hits the runway. Speed brake when it's in the air. I don't know where I had that. Anyway, we can put the landing lights on now. We put the fixed ones on, and then when we cleared to land, we can put the retractable ones on. Put the engine switches back to continuous. Um, put the logo light back on, just so everyone can see the gorgeous Ryanair tail in the day. I know, it makes sense. So, we can start to turn in now. 250 on the heading for 28 gives us 30 degrees for the localizer, which is exactly what we need. We just plan it so we'll level about five miles before, then we can start to wind the speed back, and then we won't be too fast. We can arm the localizer now. 26 miles to go, passing 6,500 feet. We can also now change to uh, normal, uh, the local Q&H, which is 1029 as well. We just speed it up a little bit, just so it descends a bit faster. And then we're not trying to chase the localizer. There we go, that's more like it. Because it will speed up to 260, and when it gets to 260, it'll decrease the rate of descent. You can already see here on the vertical path, we're actually gaining some altitude back. So it's just about looking ahead, seeing the scenario, and then reacting to it. It's really not difficult. As I said, there are probably a million other ways of doing it, but this is the way I do it. So there's the glide slope, so we've got the glide slope now, which is nice, which means I can start to come back on the speed a little bit. The diamond is just within range. We can even give it a lesser cut, so I do 260 on the heading to cut a little bit shallower. If we come back to 230 knots, we can also take flat 1 below 250 knots. 
which is something that is quite common for when you're coming in quite fast. So as soon as we pass through 50 knots, which is now, we can put flat one down. Flat one will just give us a little bit more drag. Localizer is just becoming alive now. You can see the pink diamond on this side. Let me get rid of the yoke for you. Um, you can continue the reduction in speed all the way down. I guess this could be classed as something called a CDAP, a Continuous Descent Approach, basically is what it says on the tin. You descend all the way down from cruise without stopping. There you go, localizers is alive. We can now capture the glide slope. Uh, we can also engage the secondary autopilot, which will then give us a Cat 3 system. We can continue coming back down, and we can fly the glide slope, or we can fly the ILS at flat 1 for now. It's 182 knots. Considering we're 15 miles out, that's quite sufficient. We can sink the runway heading too. Missed approach altitude is 3,000 feet, so we'll just bug that now because we're already on the glide slope, so it doesn't matter. Actually, sorry, it's 5,000 feet. It's the initial, yeah, sorry, 5,000 feet. Um, nice gentle descent, no real worries at the moment. Some nice cloud around. One thing I did forget to do, and that's because of all my rushing, I forgot to set the uh, decision altitude, uh, oh, sorry, the decision height. Actually, it's altitude, it's 650 Barrow. So we'll do that now. Should have done that on the initial approach phase, I completely forgot. This isn't so important if you're just learning basic stuff. This is more advanced stuff. Alright, so I'm visual with, with Dublin now. I can see Dublin there. Um, I'm going to take flat 5 now and start to slow it down a little more. Flat 5 speed is one about 163, 162, something like that. Okay, here comes a wing shot for the people that love it. And the secondary wing shot. And back to the flight deck. Okay, we can carry on inside the flight deck where we should be. So that will continue decelerating on its own with little to no effort. We'll leave it until about 5 miles before we take the gear. I could take it off autopilot now and fly it down, but really... If you're in a scenario where you've got ATC and you're trying to do everything at once, you don't need to. It's not, you know, it's not mandatory to take it manually. So there you go, this is the radio altimeter. Uh, whatever it's called, radio something or other, that shouts at you, tells you where you are in life. Um, yeah. Readjust myself on my chair. So you notice what, so flat one at 250 knots, and then flat five to follow when you're comfortable. The next stage of flap will not be flap 10. I just make that perfectly clear. It goes geared down. So we'll do it now. We're geared down with flat 15, okay? That's that's a, that's a kind of procedure, I guess. I've never heard them use flat 10 before. With that, you need to follow through with the bug speed. So let's say we're clear to land. We can turn all the landing lights on. Uh, we can continue now, really, to come back to the approach speed which is 140 plus 5, so 145 is there. We can bring flap 30 down. Arm the auto brake, or arm the speed brake, sorry. Um, and we can now disengage the autopilot and also disengage the auto throttle. Oops, there we go. Right, so that's my aircraft. 
just move it down a bit so I can see the flight directors for you. Keep the flight directors in. The flight directors are your source of a mate. Well, your source of everything that will get you on the ground in one piece. So right now it's telling me to, you know, pretty much stay where I am. The power's good. 150 knots slowing down quite nicely. Now, th some airports have weird AFCADs, so just follow the flight director. Uh, it, you may see, like, three whites or one white or, you know, there you go, there's one white now. I'm not actually too low. It's just where I am now, but I wasn't at the time. It's just the AFCAD is a little bit off. There you go. Now I'm bang on and it's still saying three reds. I'm slightly right of centre line, but that's because of the wind pushing me from the left. Um, but yeah. There's just, just aim. Your aiming point is for the end of the runway. If you keep looking at the end of the runway and then you want to touch down just where the, 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 the piano the three piano keys are either side of the runway, just anywhere near there. Because the TDZ on this scenery isn't actually, TDZ being touchdown zone, isn't marked properly. 50 feet, 40, idle the power at 30 feet, just into a gentle flare. Bit of rudder to counteract for the wind, and we're down. Don't slam the nose wheel like I just did. Idle reverse coming online. That's it, you don't need to put full reverse on, just let it slow down under its own steam. There you go, 60 knot, or 70 knot, 60 knot, so you can bring the reverses in now. You can vacate Echo 7, which is the one after. Could have probably got off there, but whatever. Bring the flaps in, bring the spoilers in, speed brake, whatever you want to call it. Turn your fly directors off. You could have done that when you're on the approach if you didn't want them, but it's always useful to have them. Turn your transponder off, go up here, turn the taxi light off, landing lights off. Put your ignition switches back to normal, turn your strobe lights off, turn your APU on, uh, and turn your pro peaks off, which is something I learned the other day. There's a wing view for your people that like it. Anyway. I don't think taxiing in is something that you'd really want to see. Uh, once your APU starts up, all you need to do is transfer the generators over, uh, and then, like you did on startup, it's just the reverse of the startup sequence. Just pull those two fuel levers here, and the engines will cut off. So, that's it. Manchester to Dublin in probably less than 30 minutes, I really hope. I'm going to edit some bits out because they're a bit long. Um, I hope that you found some use in this. I'm not an expert. There will be mistakes. Haters will post and tell me that I'm doing it wrong. But we got there, didn't we? And that was the whole idea. So if you liked it, please show me. That sounded really homo. But still, press the like button. Also, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can. Uh, Twitter.com forward slash HD. Same for Facebook.com forward slash HD. Twitch is just forward slash Bellins. I made that mistake on my last video saying Bellins HD. You will find me on all of those uh, platforms. Twitch, if you want direct access to talk to me, is probably the easiest because I'll be talking to you on voice. Therefore, you can communicate with me. If you need any help, don't forget that there is a comment section below this video. Uh, if I don't reply to you, I'm sure some other knowledgeable young chap or chapess will. If that's even a word. So... Until next time, thank you very much for watching. I have been Berins, or Matt, whichever you prefer to call me. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, or night, or whatever time it is. Take care. Bye-bye.